Hello everybody, welcome to my latest video all about adding color data to a monochrome image. Don't forget, if you like the video, give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Okay, I'm going to be talking about adding color data to a monochrome image. So here's a monochrome image that I took just over a week ago when it was the last good clear night for a while. And it's a hydrogen alpha image with a monochrome camera so it's a monochrome camera taken using a hydrogen alpha filter in front of it so we've got a really nice view of the horse head and the flame nebula here showing some really nice detail despite the fact there was a strong bright gibbous moon in the sky at the time so there we go lovely image of the horse head the intention was to take color images as well red green and blue to produce some color but i'm not going to be able to do that while the moon's in the sky and also oxygen 3 and sulfur images to create some hubble palettes as well but again i wasn't able to do that one because of the moon and two because of the cloud so i've not had a decent night to be able to get any more data so what i wanted to do was to add some color to the image so that I could bring out some colour and just create a nice colour image. And why not? While it's cloudy, you've got to do something, haven't you? So let's get a bit of processing going and have a practice at these things. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I had a look at all the images that I've taken of the horse head nebula over the years. And the only image I could find that covered most of the field of view that I've got in this image was taken back in 2009. Now this was in the infancy of my exploration into digital astrophotography because up to that point most of my imaging had been done using slide film so a whole new learning experience and you know steep learning curve as to how it all works and now before i show you this image i hope you're not going to laugh because here it is yeah very grainy you know it, I have improved a heck of a lot since I first took this image, um, but uh, you can see it's a fairly wide angle view of the Horsehead Nebula and there is some colour data in there. It is very grainy, it's very bitty, but you can see the colour nicely. Here's the Horsehead, here's the red nebulosity behind it, here's the Flame Nebula. And you can see a hint of blue in the reflection nebula just to the left and lower left of the horse head as well. It is very grainy, but we can use that color and add it to the other image, and it's not going to affect the quality of the image that much, surprisingly. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, the first step is to copy this image. So I'm using Affinity Photo but the process is very very similar in photoshop so i'm going to copy this color image and then i'm going to go back to the monochrome image and i'm going to paste the image on top of that monochrome image then what i need to do go over to the layers tool over here and change the upper layer the colored layer to 50 percent and click outside so it sticks at 50% and you can now see through the colored image to the uh, monochrome image below and now what we need to do is enlarge it and size it and rotate it to make sure that we match up as good as possible the stars in the image with the stars in the monochrome image and I'm going to have to use the uh, zoom tool over here and zoom out a couple of times because I know having practiced this that I'm going to need a little bit of elbow room around the edges to uh, manipulate the image. So make sure you click on the top image is selected and click on the move tool up here and you'll see the little handles appear and you can change the sizes. So there you go. We can enlarge it, move it around so that we get those stars and everything located together. Of course, we need to rotate it as well. There is a piece of software called Registar that will do this all for you, but I'm showing you how to do this manually. OK, so that will save you a bit of money. And so what we need to do. So if you align a bright star with another bright star like this one here, 
and then you can enlarge this to the size you think it's going to be and keep lining that up and you can see that that's lined up that's nearly lined up with that reflection nebula so if you go down to the, one of these corners here and go just beyond it you can see it turns into a curly arrow so once you've got that you can rotate that image so rotate it so that they're about the same distance from one another and then move it back into place and you can see it's starting to come together these stars aren't quite lining up these are that nearly is but these aren't as well so we need to do a little bit more work getting that the right size getting it the right, right rotation it's a bit of a faff but it does work eventually so you've just got to keep working your way through the size and the uh, orientation just so you get as much as you can aligned up it doesn't have to be spot on but the better you can get it the better the end result is going to be of course so just going to enlarge that a little bit more there it's typical in the practice run it went really really easily and now it's uh, taking a bit of time but there you go so that's nearly it and you can use your up and down to, to just get it right so you can see that's all aligned the star images in the upper image aren't as good as the uh, lower image but that doesn't matter too much at this stage okay you can see there's a bit that's not quite lined that that bit of the image is missing uh, in the top image but you probably won't notice that much once we finished okay so um, once we've done that go back to your layers up here select the upper layer again make sure that's selected and put that back to 100% so we're not able to look through the image there you go no we're not finished yet okay so what we need to do we need then need to grab that top layer and drag it below the upper one you can't see any change in that image you can just see the monochrome image so what we need to do we need to select the upper image and then from this drop down menu in the layers you go down to luminosity and there you go so now you can see the detail in the upper layer the monochrome layer and you can see some of that color starting to come through so it's not going to be perfect because the image i've used for the color isn't perfect because the stars were huge so it's going to cause lots of color fringing around the stars but it shows you how it all works so once we've made that into a luminosity we're looking through that luminosity layer to the color below now with a luminosity layer it does not add any color information to the image at all so any color information is coming from the lower layer but the lower layer doesn't add any brightness information to the image either and so if you want to make changes to the brightness of the image you have to make those changes on the luminosity layer right let's zoom back in so that it fits the whole screen so there we go so it looks a bit grainy at the moment but we're going to fix that okay so we're going to go back to the background layer which if you remember has got all our color information and we're going to blur that layer so if we go to blur gaussian blur and then blur that layer so just do enough to get rid of that color noise that's starting to show through so it's not quite nine or ten and then click apply and there you go we're starting to get some nice color the other thing you can do if you go into vibrance tool and then you might want to increase that by about 20 or 30 percent and then so drag the bottom layer which says saturation up to about 20 percent click merge and that will apply it to the lower layer and then you might want to do that again just to boost that color a little bit more how far you go depends on your taste I don't like too much and that's probably getting near too much but you can see quite nicely that we've got very nice detail in there we've got some horrible color blue fringes because the star images on my really old image were rubbish basically but you can see how it's applied that color to the horse head nebula really really nicely uh, and you can see there's a slight um, 
grayness here where there is no color information but if you wanted to you could crop that out quite nicely just by using the crop tool and then once you've done that if you then select the top layer and then go merge down that will merge that and it's a single layer so that's complete that's now been done and then you can file save as and then save it as either an affinity photo or if you want to export it you can export it as a png jpeg tiff or whatever from that point onwards so hope you found that useful if you have please like the video and of course don't forget to subscribe to my channel take care folks see you all soon bye bye